On the module Jack the Ripper in the Victorian Underworld, one of the things that we do is that we go on a field trip and we recreate a, a Ripper walk. And what we do on the Ripper walk is we go around key sites that have relevance to the module, either because they're important in understanding Victorian society and Victorian culture, or because they're directly related to the crimes of Jack the Ripper. So for instance, we'll go around the five murder sites and we will think about things like their proximity, the location, the surrounding area, how would someone commit these crimes and get away unseen. So it gives students the chance to really bring to life the kind of things they've been learning in the classroom. They get a feel for the area. They get a feel for what it might have been like to live in the Victorian period. They look at the housing, they look at the architecture, and they get a better sense of the general hustle and bustle uh, of the area. And this fits into the module really well because we look at all the different aspects relating to the murders that took place, how they affected uh, individuals that lived in Whitechapel during the latter part of the 19th century, and how society reacted to the crimes that took place, what happened in relation to policing, social reform, moral crusaders, uh, and so on and so forth. But more important than that is, for me, is why we're still interested in a Victorian murder that happened so many years ago. It's not just about the whodunit kind of nature of it, it's what this particular set of crimes, as gruesome as they are and as horrible as they are, can tell us about how crime was investigated, how it impacted upon communities and upon society, and how we can learn from that today and what are the similarities and differences between the nature of crime, the nature of crime reporting, the nature of crime detection between then and now. And it really shows how far we've come.